brand new automatic duck. Please welcome from Seattle and from the recent pigeon show in Snohomish, Washington, West Plate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's so good to be back. It, uh, Lassie Pug has been one of the, the events that I've talked at many times, and it's been a number of years since I've been here, and uh, it feels really good to be back. It feels very comfortable. But I do have a question. Who in the room has never seen me speak, just so I can I know how much history I need to go into? Okay, there's enough audio. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a dive back into the past and tell you, tell you why we're here tonight. Um, do, you have, do you have new bottle openers? Do we have new bottle openers? Yeah, that question's been asked a number of times. Thanks for <laughs> priming that pump, Michael. The same blue bottle openers, the same ones. Uh, so my name is Wes Plate. Uh, I started out as an avid editor back in the early 90s, mid 90s. And during that time, I was doing a lot of work where I was taking my avid offline edits into Adobe After Effects so that I could get my advertising agency clients to buy off on my cuts. Because as creative and brilliant as they were, they were not able to see past the crappy chroma key. So I would take my crappy AVR 77 Avid video, send it into After Effects, get a really sweet looking chroma key. That way they could at least buy off on my cut. And then somebody else would just end up redoing all the work anyway in a linear suite or in a Quantel Henry or something. But I had this problem where I was constantly trying to use Avid and Media, Avid Media Composer and Adobe After Effects as though they were the same tool. And uh, believe it or not, there wasn't a way to get them to work together back in the late 90s. So I went to my father who happened to be a programmer, and I said, Dad, I got an idea. Might be a fun little project for us to do on the side. Might be a fun weekend thing for us to do. Um, we were ignorant about how difficult the problem was that we were trying to solve, and so we did it. That's the best thing about being stupid. You don't know that you're making a massive mistake. Um, Thankfully, the mistake worked out pretty well for us. And over time, Apple came to us and they said, hey, we really, like, we really like what you've done with Avid After Effects. Could you do a Final Cut Pro to After Effects? And we said, that sounds pretty cool. Then we did a plugin that translated Final Cut Pro into Avid. This is back when Final Cut 3 had just shipped. We made a plugin that would allow you to take, um, producers had their free copy of Final Cut 3 that they got from their friends that they were checking out. So they were doing their offlines, but they needed to finish it on an Avid because as we all know, it's not professional if it's not Avid. So they would do their offlines in Final Cut 3, and then they would finish it in an Avid. And so we made a plugin that would make that possible. Then um, Apple came out with Final Cut Pro HD 4. I think they actually called it Final Cut Pro HD. And when Final Cut Pro 4.1 came out, they introduced XML import and export. And so we were the first company to make a plugin for Final Cut Pro that had XML import. And so we actually made it possible through that technology. We took an Avid OMF file, our plugin read that, it turned it into Final Cut 7 or Final Cut 4 XML and brought that into Final Cut. So we enabled the workflow to do an offline in Avid and finish it in Final Cut. Now, that may not be totally crazy talk today, but that was really crazy talk back then. Um, but we were able to get some translations between Final Cut Pro and Avid from Avid into Final Cut Pro that was much better than what Avid could do between their own products. And so we had some success in that area. Um, we also did some stuff for Premiere Pro that wasn't very successful. Um, not, that was just because the APIs weren't there. We had to do some really stupid stuff that is now fixed. But uh, we did a plugin for combustion that for the 10 people that used combustion. That was pretty cool. Um, Dad and I had a good time. And by 2011, Adobe came to us and they said, you know, for a long time we've talked about licensing your stuff, but how about if we actually do it? What if we brought your stuff to your technology in-house? What if you came and worked for us? And Dad and I had been working really hard for a really long time, and we thought, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Let's, let's uh, do that. And then we spent a summer of talking to lawyers, and it was very stressful, and um, I don't really want to talk about that anymore. Uh, we went to work there. Uh, Dad worked on getting um, uh, the Premiere Pro AAF import was replaced with technology from Automatic Duck. So uh, I think it was CS6 maybe CC, one of those two. Um, Premiere Pro's AAF import was dramatically improved based on the, um, the technology that they had acquired from us. I went to go work on a product called Prelude and uh, Prelude Live Logger in product management. And then by the end of 2013, both Dad and I were finished with our responsibilities with Adobe. I was let go. And Dad and I were looking at, left looking at each other thinking, well, what the hell are we going to do now? And so the first thing we did is we went to Peru and we hiked to Machu Picchu and had our minds blown. And uh, actually, I really, 
we should talk about that someday. That was, an, that was a transformative experience. Um, and then we said, well, what could we do? Like, what? I missed working with my dad. I mean, one of the real sadnesses of, of the Adobe experience was that I was off in one area of the company and he was working in another area of the company and we just kind of missed uh, our partnership. So um, we said, well, what could we do? Well, Adobe purchased technology from us, but we still had our company. And as you know, these bottle openers are just, they won't die, right? So I mean, we had a brand that seemed to have some validity. So what could we do with it? Now, coincidentally, right about that time, um, I started to be listening to some podcasts like Chris Fenwick's FCPX Grill and other things where people were talking about how Final Cut 10 was not a terrible NLE. Um, now, I mentioned I started out in Avid. I also ed edited on Final Cut Classic. Um, so I'm definitely old school. And while I'm in a tremendously good physical shape and I look very young, I am old enough to know the difference between you know, what the kids today don't know about the old days. Uh, I've been around enough where tracks mean something and you know, I kind of understand the complaints. So I said, well, these people, are, these people are high, right? I mean, people who are talking so much about Final Cut 10, what is it they're smoking? I kind of want to know what they're smoking. I kind of want to feel it because they seem to be enjoying themselves. So I, I set out to learn Final Cut 10. And it, wasn't an e it was not an easy experience. I went through all the Ripple training stuff, which I highly recommend. Um, and I also learned that to properly learn Final Cut 10, if you have any experience, you kind of have to just ignore all that. You kind of have to turn everything off. Um, just as an aside, uh, we do have uh, dispensaries for um, medical um, compounds in the state of Washington. <laughs> And there was one night where I was, I was clear, thinking very clearly, and, I, and it just became, like it all made sense. The magnetic timeline made sense. I got it. And I, it was such an exciting thing, really, to kind of get over that hump and understand Final Cut 10. Um, and so as soon as I did that, I realized, OK, well, the way that I work is that the editing system is just part of the puzzle. Uh, because I, I'm always, I'm trying to think in lots of different ways, and After Effects is always something that I use in my workflow. So this was in sometime in 2014, I said, well, what could we, um, I mean, how do I get from Final Cut 10 to After Effects? And I couldn't find the solution. Now, there, it turns out there was a solution. Um, it was a free utility that would convert Final Cut XML into a JavaScript, but at the time that that happened, that utility was just wasn't working at all. I don't know if... I had a, it was just a bad timing thing. But Dad and I said, well, we understand After Effects plugins really well. Uh, we actually understand Final Cut 10 XML in a way because of some um, other development we had done in the past. So we decided, let's go ahead and make this After Effects plugin. So um, that brings us to today, where actually, well, that brings us to today. But I'll, the story goes to September 9th, when Automatic Duck announced that they had come back. We had made a plugin for After Effects that would translate Final Cut 10 into After Effects. And um, that's what I'm here to show you tonight, is the resurgence of Automatic Duck and, and how we're going to embrace this new NLE that is blowing everyone's minds. And uh, by the way, is anybody in the room using Final Cut 10? Yeah, OK. Anybody in the room just not understand why Final Cut 10 needs to be in? I mean, is, is there some animosity with anybody? Yeah. yeah. OK. No, I, listen, I want to I, I wanna be very open about this. I'm very sad about the animosity thing. I'm, uh, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a big love thing, right? But um, I'm sad that people hate Final Cut 10, and I'm sad that the people who love Final Cut 10 feel like they're oppressed. I just want us all <laughs> to get over it because they're just frickin' tools, man. And Final Cut's fantastic, Premiere's fantastic, Avid's fantastic. Um, I don't think Sony Vegas is fantastic, but you know it's there. <laughs> I'm not going to oppress those people, though. All right, so that's my that's my introduction. So let's get into uh, some demos. Uh, this is my my slide. I don't like slides, so I decided to do that one. All right, here I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, and um, basically I, I'm just going to show you a couple workflows. This is a 30 second commercial um, for a fair, and uh, let's see if I play it. I'm not. I'll turn off the, off the music. But uh, it's just your typical 30 second spot. I've got some picture in picture type things coming up uh, right here. This scales down to reveal a four way picture in picture. And then I've just got some other things that have some color correction. You're about to see a secondary storyline. Look at that secondary storyline. Um, the next clip here has got magic bullet looks applied to it. Let's dissolve to a placeholder text 
followed by some more pictures and pictures. Um, the best thing you can do when you're demoing this stuff is pictures and pictures, as you know. If you've seen these demos before, I always have a picture and picture. Uh, so I've got, um, let's just go ahead and just talk about some of the, the things that I've got going on here. I've got some third party effects going on. I've got colorista the three applied to this clip. Uh, these things are also, obviously they're picture in picture, so that means they're scaled down, uh, repositioned. Uh, the, the sheep, are you the sheep? No, you're the sheep. The sheep also has a flop applied to it. I have a little wash of color that has um, some kind of blending mode applied to it, the screen mode, also the opacity is set to 37-ish percent. Uh, let's do a Command A, Command R to show you the speed changes. I've got a uh, what is like time remapping. Um, it's a variable time, uh, retiming happening on a single clip. These other, th I have a couple other clips. This clip here is sped up. Uh, the four-way picture-in-picture that I showed you earlier that gets revealed when the eggs go away, uh, that picture-in-picture -picture is uh, done inside of a, excuse me, somebody want to answer for me while I burp? Compound clip. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> uh, that's a compound clip. So if I, if I click that, you can see there's the compound clip. Compound clips are really rad, actually. I mean, nesting has always been possible. I mean, Final Cut 7 had nesting, but the way the architecture worked, there was a lot of overhead that happened as, um, as things were processed into that nested comps uh, output sort of thing, and then that got piped into the other thing. Anyway, with compound clips, the overhead isn't so much there, so it's just sort of all the goodness of nesting. Um, and then I've got some audio down below, and let's see, what else? I've got notes, secondary storyline transforms, opacity, blend mode, speed. Oh, and the, plug and the plugins, right. So uh, I've got a clip here uh, that's got magic bullet looks applied to it. And if I uh, select that and then I click this, it brings up uh, the magic bullet looks interface. And there's some stuff happening to it. I will show you in After Effects how that's going to come through exactly like it. So the workflow is essentially I've, I'm to the point where I need to send this off to my graphic designer. I've taken it to this level. I'm done. Um, well, maybe I am the graphic designer. It doesn't really matter. I can either be working collaboratively or I can be the, the one person band. But my, my next step is to, actually, my next step is to launch After Effects and then talk while it, while it launches, because that's going to take just a moment. Um, this plugin works in After Effects CS6, CC, CC2014, and CC2015. Um, and so to get out of Final Cut Pro 10, you, I need to export an XML file. I can export either the project, I can export the event that the project lives in, I can even export the library that the event that holds the project lives in. And so uh, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can export out of Final Cut 10, but basically I have the project selected and from the file menu, I'm going to say file, export XML, and I'm going to put it on my desktop with the other millions of files that I have, and uh, that's that. So let's switch into Adobe After Effects, where the plugin lives in the import submenu, and the plugin is called Automatic Duck X Import AE. So can I zoom in? Oh, look at that, look at that. Automatic Duck X Import AE. A lot of thought went into that product name, believe me. All right, so that brings up uh, an, a user interface. Uh, if you've seen the After Effects import plugin that we used to sell, this is very similar in, in how it looks. We've got some settings where you can choose um, which direction the layers are stepping up and down. We have an option that you can turn uh, nest, um, secondary storylines into pre-comps. And there's really not much to it. Just click OK and then choose the XML file at the top, click Open. It does its magic. And now what you're left with is a composition. So everything is finished, plugin's done. I open up the comp, and now here it is inside of After Effects, where um, you know it looks a little bit weird at first because I've got way too many columns open. I'm not interested in that, and this is let's screw that over. So here's all every single layer, or every clip from Final Cut 10 is now an After Effects layer. And if I was to um, scrub through, uh, let's see, Command, let's see, do a little Shift, Control, Zero. Uh, no, that's not going to work. All right, I'll just scrub through. Um, but let's go to the point where I had my little uh, picture, my little eggs zooming away to go into the um, picture in picture of the compound clip. Uh, boy, you know, I love After Effects, but this perform, it's just so slow sometimes, you know? Uh, so anyway, I've got my picture in picture, which is the compound clip, so I can open up my little four-way picture in picture nested composition. There's all those four layers. So compound clips come in as nested comps. That kind of makes some sense. Um, down later in the timeline, I had my placeholder text, which actually comes in as a editable text layer. So look at that, this, this text is editable. Sweet, thank you for the clapping. 
don't get enough of that. If, if, any, if you ever feel the need to clap more during this, do not. Uh, okay. <laughs> Give me the clap. Give me the clap. Uh, oh, by the way, markers come through. I didn't mention that. I had a marker down below that, uh, that says, how cute is this cow? Because I wanted to communicate to my designer, how cute is this cow? Uh, no, the, the pigeon show, I only took photographs. I got there just before they ended. I, was at, I, I uh, happened to drive by a sign the other day that said pigeon show. And I almost drove by. And then I got, thought better of it. And I stopped and I went in. Uh, it was at the, um, the National Guard Armory in my small town, which I'd never been in. I always wanted to be in that. Like, what the hell goes on in there? Well, I'll tell you what goes on in the National Guard Armory. Frickin' pigeon shows. So it was like a, a dog show, but for pigeons. So I posted some pictures on Facebook, and, and uh, Horton saw it. It was, awesome. <laughs> it was, it was kind of rad. Uh, so anyway, uh, picture in picture, you, know, you, you, you get this, right? I mean, it's like, I could go on and on, but it's, it's, it's freaking accurate translation, and it's fast, and it makes sense, and it's just export XML, import XML. Uh, let's, show you, let's just show you another one, um, because I could have I totally faked this, right? Maybe this is all for maybe this is all for show. Let me show you another sequence that I couldn't possibly have faked for you. Yeah, it could be pre-baked, but it, no way. Here's a here's an interesting thing. Here's a uh, an edited sequence that looks like it's just one clip, but it's actually a uh, what's that word again, Dean? Compound clip. Compound clip. Thank you. This compound clip has a magic bullet looks applied to it. Uh, if I select it properly, Ooh. thank you. Command four. Uh, now I will show you. Boy, something's unhappy all of a sudden. Uh, I got magic bullet looks applied to this nested uh, uh, this compound clip. Uh, I've I'm a run I'm a runner. Uh, I'm running in my very first ultra marathon on Saturday. Not to brag. And um, the my, my I'm starting to get some plantar fasciitis in my left foot. So I've been doing some rolling. And so I was rolling with this ice, this frozen thing one night, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I videotaped it? <laughs> and so I did. Uh, anyway, I ended up made, I just made this little thing. It's, it's a thing. And then, I, and then I said, well, now that I've got this, I have to take it into After Effects. I mean, that's what I do. So let's export this to XML, uh, put that on my desktop, hop into After Effects, import, X import AE, uh, roll feet version C. One or more text, okay, so this is an important thing. Uh, when, you, when you try the plugin and you get this message, do not be alarmed. Uh, this just means that there was something that was done in Final Cut that the plugin can't translate. So I click OK. And when I uh, open up this composition, uh, first of all, it looks, uh, first of all, it's like, wow, look at that. That single clip came through. Rad, with, with the audio. Uh, but of course, in that nested comp is where everything else is. And inside of here, there was some native Final Cut Pro 10 color correction on this particular clip down here that you may not be able to see because it's way down low. So I'll zoom in. So this clip had you know, the color board thing in Final Cut 10 that you use for color correction that I can't figure out how to do anything with. But um, I had a, done something to it just so I could at least show you that sometimes, you know, when things don't translate, you get a marker to indicate that to you. Uh, you also get an HTML log. So if I go to my desktop, uh, new window, desktop, there's an HTML file that was created by the plugin when it did the import. And this gives you any, even more information about any in issues that might have happened. So it tells me that it did apply uh, the looks effect. It told me that it couldn't do the color correction. It couldn't do this match color effect. And, so anyway, and you can go to this frame number. So that way, it's just a nice thing for you to check your work. All right. Um, I'm starting to run low on time. So you kind of get the idea, right? So I've got Final Cut Pro 10 where I'm doing my work. At some point, I want to work in After Effects because there's some magic thing that can be done there. Uh, the world needs a bridge that does it really sweetly, and this is that bridge. So uh, the plugin is called Automatic.x Import AE. It's a plugin for After Effects. Now, let's say you are collaborative. Let's say that, um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, is anybody going to ask me how you're going to get this from back into Final Cut? I should, I should do that really quick before I, um, before I forget. Oh, that's a great question, Michael Horton. So let's say you're so you're done in After Effects. How are you going to get get it back in into um, Final Cut Pro? Yeah, you, know, um, you know, in in the Premiere Pro After Effects world, you got Dynamic Link where you can just bring your After Effects comp directly into Premiere and and play it, or or maybe uh, render and replace so that it, you can actually play it. Uh, in Final Cut, they don't have you know Dynamic Link, so we have to render 
out of After Effects. But that's not really a sad thing because we're all used to that and that, that guarantees you good results anyway. So um, what I have in my Stanwood Fair, okay, so let's go back to uh, the Fair. So in my, so I've rendered out, um, let's say the 32nd spot of the entire 32nd piece and then I've imported it into Final Cut and all I gotta do now is just plop that on top and you know, if I'm really nervous about anything else happening, I can then disable everything else. But now I've got my 30 second render out of After Effects that has all the goodness that the graphic designer gave me and uh, it's, all, it's all good. Now, you also maybe you wanna work in sections. You know, it could be that instead of the 30 second piece, you want to have just the, just the last little card. But basically the idea is when you're done in After Effects, you just render out a movie and you edit that back into Final Cut Pro. Can you edit what you've done in After Effects in Final Cut? Yeah. If you want to have separate clips in Final Cut to work with what you had done in After Effects, you could render out smaller sections. Uh, but essentially, anything you do in After Effects is going to be flattened into some kind of one file that can no longer be untaken apart. Yeah, this is really sort of the, the last step. It's kind of like in, if you were to export your mixed audio out of Pro Tools and you know, you, now you've got this mixed thing, well, you can't really get back to the stems necessarily. Um, I would like to point out one very special thing that um, back in the old days when I was doing all my fancy Avid After Effects work in, in Avid, um, I was working together with a, a graphic designer named Justin who was my, one of my greatest friends and we worked very closely together. And when I was working on this little demo project, I was like, I really want this to look real. Like, I want you to think that I actually did a commercial for the fair. So I invited my friend Justin. I said, hey, Justin, can you help me with some graphics? So Justin and I, we re-teamed for this demo. And I would, like to I would like to introduce you to Justin Lebo, who's in the back of the room. Just wave your hand, Justin, say hi. He's one of my greatest friends. Automatic Duck could not have happened if he did not work with me in the 90s. So I love him, and uh, I want you to as well. Um, OK. so. Collaboration. So let's say I'm working with Justin. I need to get him, uh, he's gonna work in After Effects. I'm just the editor. So I need to get him the media so he can do his magic. So that brings up another product that Automatic Duck is selling called Media Copy. Automatic Duck Media Copy. We've introduced version, it's now a version four. It's a product we used to sell a long time ago. And Media Copy will read an XML file from Final Cut Pro and figure out the media files that are required for it and then send it to a, a destination that you specify. So let's launch Media Copy. It's the simplest of interfaces. Uh, let's see. Let's hide that. Let's hide that. Let's bring back that. There we go. So here I got a media copy. Uh, here I got my XML file. And I'm just going to drag the XML file from the finder into the media copy uh, window. These are the source files that, I'm, that I need to copy the media for. And this down below is the destination where I want to send those media files. This could be a Thunderbolt drive. This could be a Firewire drive, a USB drive. It could be a network mount. It could be all kinds of things. But all Media Copy does is it says what media files are used in that XML file and where am I going to copy them to. And it's just really, really easy to use so that you don't have to put a whole lot of brain power into figuring out how you're going to send the media for your XML file to whoever's going to deal with it. And maybe whoever's going to deal with it is just going to archive it or, or save it or do something not very interesting with it, but it's just a nice way to figure out these are the media files that are used by this XML file. Now, um, you could do a similar thing in Final Cut Pro uh, using the, uh, was it the copy to library commands? Like I could go into my edit and I could say, here's this project and I want to copy the project to a new library, but then that creates a FCP bundle file that maybe the After Effects artist isn't going to know what to do with because it looks like a file, but it's really a special folder that contains all the media. So there's other ways you can do it but it's less confusing and simpler to just have this little tool that we call Media Copy that just says, hey, go grab those media files. And if you happen to be an Avid user, any Avid people in the room? I know that you got a couple. That light's so bright. Oh, I see it. Hi, hi hands back there. Uh, so you know how you're, you got that Avid Media Files folder that's full of stuff that you don't know what it is, right? So how are you going to know which media files to copy to, to your friend? I dare you. How are you going to know? Well, you're going to use media copy. That's the answer. Come on, this is so easy. So uh, you're going to take an AAF file. You're going to plop it into there. And then you're going to click copy. And media copy reads your AAF file or your Avid bin file, uh, figures out the media files that are used, and then copies those to the destination. Uh, not ALEs, because I don't think ALEs have any reference to media. They're just text files. Do they have reference to the media? Uh, we're not going to do ALEs. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's address the preserve source paths. Uh, okay, so anyway, there's a log file that can be opened up at the end. I know I'm almost out of time, so, and I want to save a, a couple of minutes for questions. Okay, Whew. then let's slow down. All right, uh, so uh, there is an HTML log file which tells you um, what was copied, so it's just a nice, a nice thing. There's no uh, trimming, no handles. It's like, yes, you used two seconds of that five-hour media file. And we're going to be diligent, and we're going to copy every hour of that media file for you. <laughs> um, OK, so there are some other options in here. So uh, also copy above edit sequence file. This will copy the XML file or AAF file or whatever to the destination. Because if you copy all your media to the Thunderbolt slash Firewire slash USB drive, then you drive all the way across town to Justin, because you're going to work with him, because he's awesome. And then he loads up your drive, and he discovers all I have is media. Where's the XML file? Where's the AAF file? So you enable this, and then when it does the copy, it copies the, the source file too. So now everything you need is inside of that folder. Inside of the media copy source files, there's the AAF file. So that's what the first option does. The next option, preserve source media paths, which Steve asked, asked about. This is pretty rad. Uh, let's even, yeah, let's just do that. Um, preserve media source paths tries to create a new uh, series of folders that represents the exact same source path that the files were in. It's just, it's easier to show you. So click copy. It's going to think for a moment. Now look, I've got an OMF file media files folder. I guess this particular example only had OMF files. Uh, and, and there's all the media files that are in it. So let's actually, uh, let me show you an AAF file that has MXF media. Oh, look at that. Excitement for MXF media. Sweet, Aaron. You're a nerd. I'm sorry? How much, is this How much is this app? How much would you pay? <laughs> this, app is, uh, the, this app is $99. Uh, and uh, X import AE, because I made it forget, and somebody may forget to ask, the other thing, the awesome After Effects import plugin that all of you who use Final Cut 10 are going to be using. Um, and those of you who aren't using Final Cut 10, once you start using Final Cut 10, then you're going to start using that plugin. That plugin is only $199. So it's, uh, it's quite cool. So anyway. Uh, Preserve source paths. Uh, it created an Avid Media Files folder slash MXF slash one. So now, if you were going to go to a, you know an Avid system that has its you know media uh, stored in this way, all you got to do is just copy this entire you know copy the one folder to the, the media drive, and it's going to find it. So that's what the preserve source paths option does. And then the the last option that I didn't talk about is the include Avid render media files, and I'll let you figure out what that does. <laughs> Hint. It includes Avid render media files and the copy. Um, that is an only, it's only an Avid option because Final Cut, uh, their render files are sort of a, a Final Cut only thing. It's not, the information about those files is not included in the XML. So uh, we don't get the option to, to save all that. So Automatic Duck has made a brand new product called X Import AE, which is an After Effects plugin that reads Final Cut 10 XML. And then we uh, have updated media copy to version 4 with, with the new feature that it adds. In, in addition to AAF, OMF, and Avid bin files, it also now supports Final Cut 10 XML, uh, creating a, a nice holistic uh, set of tools. And at, with that, I think that's kind of the gist.